If you had free tickets to go to Japan, would you go right now? Because I sure as heck would. But, you know, before you go to Japan, I'm sure you're probably a smart person who would go try to research everything you need to know about Japan, right? You wouldn't just show up without any knowledge or information, right? Well, luckily for you, there's a lot of amazing TikToks out there that would like to tell you everything you need to know about Japan. However, you do know that apparently... Japan influencers are lying to you, which is the video we're going to be watching from Akidiras today. So let's get right into it. Hey friends, it's Akidiras, and today Hi, we're going to be watching some talk ticks because if talk any ticks. of you watch me or any other creator based here in Japan, you've probably had reels that look a lot like this. Five mm. different things that you shouldn't do in Japan. Five <laughs> mistakes foreigners make in Japan. Five <laughs> things not to forget if you're visiting Japan. Five different Japan that you shouldn't Japan. I can't. Japan, we did Japan. Oh my gosh, that's, it's crazy because I have definitely gotten some TikToks that are like that. And I kid you not, they legit play that sound effect, like that music. And it's like, then, then, then. It's just it's so funny how, how common it is. It's just the problem I have with a lot of these content creators sharing these rules is like, they're saying it in a way where it's like, unless you follow these rules in this way, then you're just going to get exiled from Japan or all Japanese people are going to hate you. As somebody that is- It's actually kind of crazy because like, I, I think it's the way they present the TikToks. Like, oh my gosh, you'll see how like- like with these types of TikToks, like, yeah, they do make it feel like if you don't follow these things, then you're not going to be welcomed in Japan. And it's like kind of crazy how like, I don't know, just <laughs> some of the some of the things that will that I have seen in these TikToks are just straight up lies. Like, I've, I've never heard of any of this stuff. I've lived here for six years. I can tell you guys right now to this day, I am still learning all the rules. If you've never visited here and you plan on doing it, you're probably not gonna get everything right. But you know what's really great is that it's okay. Japanese- Unless if you're being really, really rude when you go to visit Japan. Like, I feel like if you had to take away anything from this video, it's to, I don't know, just don't be a jerk and don't make, like, racist remarks or don't be just, just- just don't be rude and you should be okay when you're in Japan. Like, I, I just don't- I just don't think that's that difficult to do. These people know that you're just a human being that is going to make mistakes. So I'm just going to go through some TikToks talking about all of these rules per se and mm. tell you guys what's true, what's not true, or what's not really taken as seriously. So mm. let's go through it. What not to wear for your first trip to Japan. I, I love how, I love how it's a bikini and <laughs> it's a bikini. Oh, I just realized I'm going to be in the way of this, so I need to move. This is what not to wear for your first trip to Japan. Japan is a very conservative country, so do not wear any revealing clothing. Tank tops, shorts, and mini skirts should all be avoided, especially when visiting shrines and temples because it's important to- Okay, I can already tell you right away that this is a straight up lie, especially like the mini skirts. So one thing, I don't know, it's like half true, where I remember wearing like really low cut and like- low cut revealing tops is kind of like a mm, like a big no-no but mini skirts oh no 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 you could totally wear mini skirts and like really really short shorts or like skirts because that's like that's like their thing is thighs they really like their thighs over there so yeah to note that these are not tourist attractions and they're religious sites and for women definitely do not show cleavage here okay man i don't know what that's like i i um <laughs> I don't seem to have that problem, so I wouldn't even know. Hey, Japan is a conservative country. That part is true. Most people actually don't really wear revealing clothing. In the summer, too, you'll see people with cardigans and layers upon layers because they don't want to tan. The rule isn't that strict here. It's just not a thing to wear crop tops and leggings. But if you are somebody who is obviously a tourist, who is obviously coming to Japan to visit, Japanese people really don't care. Actually, I've lived here and I constantly wear things like this. I even wear tank tops. I wear jeans with holes in them. I wear shorts and no one has ever made a big deal out of it. And I am telling you right now, Japanese girls go pretty scandalous in Shinjuku. I told you, yeah, like I said, they're really into thighs. So, like, I'm sure you probably heard of Zetai Ryoiki. So, yeah, the the shorts and the skirts are fine. God damn, dude, her outfit is 
really sick. I, I, I definitely agree, but oh my gosh, how do you have the confidence to be wearing your underwear that high up? That's actually, because like, like when she turned around, it was pretty much up there. Oh my God, like the corset, she's got her thong out and every, I can't pull off this look. I would. The wedgie, the absolute wedgie she must be having right now. I wish I could. Japanese girls know how to be sexy. Like, it's not just fucking cult dresses all the time. Okay, <laughs> let's go on to the next one. Why would Japanese people rather stand on a crowded train than sit next to a foreigner? Have you ever had this situation in Japan where there are two empty seats next to you and- No, I've actually never had that. I don't know, because I was in Shinjuku and people sat next to me. Sure, I got like a bunch of looks because my hair was a different color it wasn't like my natural uh dark hair like this I, I had like i had like red hair at the time when i was in japan bright red hair and so i mean yeah people stared at me but uh people would sit next to me nobody wants to take it i actually haven't had this happen to me at all but it's happened to most of my friends and it's also happened to joey they call it the gaijin seat where people just actively avoid sitting next to them uh yeah it does happen that i can say it is a thing but the way they cope with it is just basically telling themselves more room for me but i can get why so i don't know like they were chill about it I just, I just never had this issue i've never seen this sometimes it makes you feel a little bit isolated that people feel uncomfortable to sit next to you it's a homogenous society and it's just something that we live with if you are traveling to japan don't pack your toiletries just go straight to the japanese drugstore Japan is famous around the world for their beauty and skincare products, so make sure you go to any drugstore to get high quality products at really affordable- Uh, so I get what she means, but you should still bring your toiletries. <laughs> because the thing is, is that if you come to Japan or like South Korea, a lot of people want to go get skincare stuff. You don't know what works for you anyway, and- Oh my gosh, that actually reminds me. So I remember my first time in Japan when I had to go buy some- um, face wash because I had ran out of the one that I had brought and <laughs> okay so I have conversational Japanese I I can talk about quite a bit of things but one thing I can't talk about is skincare because I didn't know the terminology for like what I needed so <laughs> I had to go to the store and try to converse with whoever it was that was at like the skincare store because i didn't go to a drugstore i went to an actual like beauty and skincare place and i obviously their job is to try to sell you products right and i'm trying to communicate with the lady at the store clerk what's going on with my skin like what kind of stuff that i need and it was so hard because i just didn't know the terminology for it and i felt like such an idiot because like it almost felt like she had to talk to me like i was five because I, I just didn't know the vocabulary and I was sitting there trying to like Google with my little dictionary like the words that I needed for like acne and like dry skin. I didn't know those words for it. And I ended up getting product that was fine for my skin. It just, it, I felt so bad because I felt like I was inconveniencing this lady's time by taking up so much time not being able to like say a word. It's just so embarrassing. But I... I feel like there are so many Japanese products that you can buy on like Amazon now. Um, there's a couple of brands that are very popular. And honestly, if you don't know what the hell it is that you're looking at, there are these little icons that say like it's like a crown. And it's like number one ranking. And there is surprisingly a lot of English on Japanese products now. So I don't really know what I, I kind of get like Aki's point like I do, but like. There is a lot more English in Japanese products now because of how much of a push there is for Japanese skincare in Western culture. And maybe a lot of you can't even like read what the products are. Bring your toiletries, even just a little bit. And also girls, if it's that time of month, not talking about skincare, but if you use tampons, Japan, it's really hard to find them and really good ones. The ones that they have here, like, let's just say they hurt. So, okay, I don't, what the hell are you putting up in your, okay, so, um, I don't like tampons. You know, they, you know, did you, did... oh my god, this is so embarrassing to talk about, oh my god. Okay, I'll share a little secret with you, boys and girls, if you're watching this. Um, did you know they make underwear that is for periods, so you don't have to wear a pad and you don't have to wear a tampon? It's like an act, it's like underwear that is meant to, you know, act like a pad, so to say. 
and yeah, you wear that for like a few hours and then you wash it and stuff and it's like reusable. And I swear to God, if anybody in the comments says it's a f***ing diaper, I'm going to literally come to your house and freaking... Oh, bring your toiletries. That's all I'm going to say. Not everyone in Japan is fluent or comfortable speaking English. This is true, especially outside of major cities. It's a good idea to learn some basic Japanese phrases. For example, arigato gozaimasu or sumimasen. Yeah, I agree. And honestly, he's so far the only reel that I've seen that actually pushed the one biggest tip that you should do before coming to Japan learn some Japanese learn some Japanese phrases you don't have to be fluent but god damn it like if you're gonna take a taxi nine times out of ten your taxi driver ain't gonna speak English and I literally just had a conversation with the taxi driver that literally was all like yeah I get that Japanese is really hard but they don't want to play charades with me and I don't want to play charades with them so can you please learn how to say can you go to this address now and <laughs> i that's true actually i i feel like if you're gonna go to any country it doesn't matter like if it's japan or somewhere else learn the basic necessities to communicate like basically help me go here or can i get this thank you excuse me hello like my name it like very basic stuff will get you so far Especially in Japan, because you want to know why? When Japanese people see you trying to speak Japanese, they appreciate that. And so it's interesting because like there is, I don't know if Aki's going to talk about it in this video, but there is this whole, um, I'm trying to think of the word. There's like something that I kind of realized when I was in Japan, I would talk to like Japanese people was that you would get comments like, oh, your Japanese is really good. And like, they're not really like complimenting you they're just trying to say something nice just for the sake of being nice and then if your japanese is actually good they will say holy shit, i can actually talk to you and like they'll immediately get into like casual lingo and because and i know this because i had someone explain it to me when i was there because i kept asking my friends um in japan i was like so why do like some people be like oh yeah you're um and versus like oh and then they'll just start talking to you in like casual speech instead of like formal and that's how they kind of explain to me like there's that oh yeah your japanese is so good you're doing great sweetie and then there's like oh i can actually like talk to you and like wow it's like it's very natural so you'll get that a lot like when you speak japanese to people like they'll constantly try to say oh yeah like they'll always say that but like they're just they're just trying to be nice, you know? It's very fascinating. You'll make everyone's lives just easier. I feel like this isn't pushed enough. Learn Japanese. I've played some easy video games in Japanese. Mm. I've used some Japanese apps. I went to Japanese school for two years. I even mm. watch anime nowadays with Japanese subtitles. I just so happen to have the first episode of Chainsaw Man on Netflix right now just to show you guys the captions. Oh, Look, that's I'm so highlighting cool. over the captions and it's telling me in the episode of how each and every word works on Netflix. And if in case you're wondering, I have an extension. What the hell? Netflix does this? And it's called Migaku. Yes, we've got a sponsor for this video, but it's a pretty damn good one. Oh. Learning a language is hard and trying to use that language in your normal day-to-day -day life is also really hard. But imagine watching your favorite shows in a different Different language and having fun learning while you're chilling. With Migaku, you can translate what? the captions in real time, look up words you don't know, and save them to study later. I'm already convinced I don't have to watch the rest of the advertisement. I gotta sign up for this immediately. This is a real this is freaking cool. Wow. That uh my gosh, that is actually really cool. This if you go to Japan. Avoid wearing shorts in Japan. Now shorts in Japan are called what? kampan and even though it's not against the law to wear shorts in Japan, you should avoid it to not look like a gaijin tourist. But my okay. <laughs> I don't know how to break this to you, but I'm white. I can't not look like a gaijin Taurus. Like, I, I, there's, it's kind of obvious at this point. Why? What's wrong with wearing shorts? I wear it all the time. Well, the truth is, if you're an adult male, anywhere above the age of 13, wearing shorts can be seen as... Okay, why do you, what do you mean, adult male above the age of 13? What do you mean, like, I'm sorry, wait, if you're older than 13, you're an adult? No, you still got a couple of years there, buddy boy. Childish and maybe even a riskless otaku. Riskless. So, I mean, I've seen forums talking about this. I had to double check. And if you're a foreigner wearing shorts in Japan, honestly, 
People don't care. Yes, it has to do with some of them think they look childish, but a big reason that I saw is people just don't think they look good in it. Actually, the main reason they think foreigners are wearing shorts is because they're traveling to Japan and they want something nice, breathable, and easy to move around in. They don't care. And also, it's really hot in Japan and depend on what time of year you're going. Like when, again, when I was in Japan, I was there during the summertime. It was so freaking hot like oh my gosh it was so hot in tokyo and i was sweating constantly and it was so hard because again like you know i had to be a bit more modest and not show any cleavage not like i really have a lot of boobage to really show off anyways but i still wanted to be modest about that aspect and like i i actually am not that comfortable wearing shorts because i just don't think i look that good in them but i had to like still wear shorts because of just how hot it was like it got so bad that i almost had like heat stroke at one point and i had to like go to the hospital because of just how much i was overheating so like if you need to wear shorts or tank tops or short sleeve shirts please do that don't risk your health for the sake of what being judged by a couple of strangers in a country like dude your health comes first and if you're gonna tell your friends oh we're not supposed to wear shorts in japan do you really want to be that person in the group that's just ruining it for everyone are am i really gonna walk in 99 percent humidity with jeans no thank you if you're coming to japan here are some etiquette rules that you should be mindful of i love how i love <laughs> I love how she was re oh, I just realized the face Aki's in. I love how she was recording on the Shibuya like walkway where there's a lot of people who are probably trying to like walk around and avoid them right now. So kind of kind of inconveniencing people just just to record a, a TikTok. When it comes to chopsticks, you shouldn't be rubbing them together or digging in your bowl to find so the whole rubbing chopsticks thing is considered rude because like typically if you're rubbing the chopsticks, it's because you're trying to get rid of the splinters. And that's telling the chef like, hey, your chopsticks are like cheap. Find what you like or don't like. Also, never use them to pass food to someone else's chopsticks. Similarly, sticking your chopsticks vertically in a bowl of rice is a big no-no. It looks like incense. I mean, yeah, there are chopstick etiquette rules, but... I, I don't even see Japanese people following them that much. I mean, even though I guess it exists, it's not really something I would really like stress out over. In Tokyo, on the escalator, stand on the left and pass on the right. You'll also know- Yes, that's correct. Uh, if you are in Tokyo on the escalator, stand on the left, pass on the right. Don't stand on the right side at all. Unless you're in Osaka, it's flipped. You stand on the right side and everyone passes on the left. I, the, why is it flipped like that though? I, so personally, I would just take the stairs. <laughs> yeah, I was one of those people. I, I would just take the stairs. I wouldn't even bother with the escalator. So I just, I never noticed that. Three things only foreigners do in Japan. Number oh, this, that's, oh, that title, you know, this is going to be good. Number one, wear sunglasses for some. What? What? Huh? For some reason, Japanese people think wearing sunglasses make people look super shady, which is ironic because there's no shade in Tokyo. And what? heads up to all the foreign guys looking for a Japanese girlfriend. A recent study showed 70% of Japanese ladies had a bad impression of guys wearing sunglasses. I don't know, man. One of the most famous people in Japan, his name is Roland. He is famously known for wearing sunglasses and people deem him as cool. I mean, granted, it's not as big of a thing to wear sunglasses in Japan as it is overseas, but... <laughs> It's not something only foreigners do. I'll look this up in Japanese. What is the reason why Japanese people don't wear sunglasses compared to Westerners? The answer is actually eye color. Japanese people tend to have black or brown eyes, which are dark and therefore less light resistant and their pupils are small. Small pupils do not let much light. Westerners with light colored eyes are sensitive to light and sunlight is prone to- I will say like that is why I wear sunglasses, but again, I saw a lot of women wearing face shields. And I don't think it's necessarily because of like the eyes. I, I think it's because they're trying to keep the sun away from their face. Like they, I kid you not, they have the face shield. And the, here's the thing, it was normally the really older ladies, like the old ladies would have the face shield, they'd have the hat and they'd have like the sun reflective um, gloves. It, Kudos to them, like, keeping the sun off their skin. Eye diseases. Yeah, there's nothing here saying that Japanese people think that you look shady. I, I, what I'm saying is just because of eye color. Why don't Japanese people wear sunglasses is a strange sight for foreign tourists visiting Japan in summer. Why don't Japanese people try to protect their eyes? Because the majority of Japanese people have no concept of eye protection at all. 
Japanese people criticize people who wear sunglasses saying that they are showing off or trying to look cool as the ozone layer becomes thinner and the ultraviolet rays become stronger. I feel like most people don't give a shit if you're wearing sunglasses. They really Japan. don't. Save this video for the 5 apps you need to know before traveling to Japan. Number 1 is the Smart EX app. You can use it to put your Shinkansen tickets and it also allows you to pick your seat. And I didn't even know that that existed. Me neither! What?! Actually, 99.9% of people that I know that take the bullet train just do it at the station. We don't use this app. And it's oh. really easy to do it at the station. There's literally a sign there that says, buy your Shinkansen tickets here. That's, that is actually true. That's probably why I never heard of this app. Okay, that's interesting. It's a virtual Suica card. If you use an iPhone, you can easily add a virtual Suica card to your wallet prior to your Japan. Yes. Yes. 100% yes. Go get this. Just I didn't know this existed either. Granted, I didn't. The last time I was in Japan was in 2018, so it was before the pandemic. I did not know that this existed. I still have my Suica card too, and I still have some Japanese yen that was left over from my trip. I'm gonna have to download this. I, I really want to go back to Japan so bad. Just put it in your phone, and you're gonna save yourself so much time. Oh, that's Get so the cool. Suica app and attach it to your credit card, and you can easily just charge up your train card. Number three is the XE currency app. You can easily convert Japanese yen to your home currency. Actually, yeah, I think it's quite handy oh. to have a currency exchange app. I don't have that one exactly, but it's nice to have on you. I didn't have one of those at all. Probably should have. Number four is the Japan Wi-Fi. Oh, speaking of which, actually, so one thing I will say about if you do go to Japan is that you're not going to really be using your credit cards that often. Like a lot of places are cash. And so you want to make sure you are exchanging like your funds a lot. Like I'm not saying like nowhere takes cards. Some places do. Usually the more like, you know, expensive touristy places do. But if you want to get like good deals and stuff and like get the bang for your buck, so to say, you want to shop with cash. Auto connect app. It locates public Wi-Fi close to you and it automatically fills out the registration form. I don't like that one. Uh, I think that's actually kind of dangerous. I personally... I, what, I, has anyone never taken, like, any type of internet safety stuff? You should never be doing that. I personally never connect to public Wi-Fi mm -hmm. when I'm traveling anywhere, unless it's, like... I don't even do that here where I live now. It's so dangerous. It's so easy to hack into, your, like, your phone and get all your data stolen. The hotel. Number five is Hot Pepper Beauty. I would suggest visiting the website instead because the app doesn't allow you to translate to English. This was so useful in booking nail salons, hair salons, and spas. Follow for more... Okay, if this is like that, that honestly sounds really cool because I remember when I wanted to get like a haircut in Japan, it was so freaking hard for me to book an appointment because, okay, there are a lot of places in Shinjuku, at least, that a foreigner can't go to. And some hair salons were like that. And trying to find a hair salon that would actually allow me to book an appointment and they would work on my hair was a challenge. So I didn't get my hair done at all because it was just too much of a challenge to try to like find someone because I, I was only there for three months. So I just I just didn't even bother with it. And interestingly enough, like some hotels are like that as well. Like some hotels don't allow foreigners in them. It's not like that common, but it is something to keep in mind if you are going to go to Japan. I guess that's useful. You can if you want. I've personally never seen a single foreigner use the Hot Pepper Beauty app. Also, I feel like most foreigners can't be bothered to navigate through a Japanese website because most of them are operated like they're back in 2005. That is so true. Just to get like my pocket Wi-Fi was like, God, it was so hard. Oh, speaking of the pocket Wi-Fi, I remember when I had pre-ordered my pocket Wi-Fi before I had gone to Japan. And I picked it up. Then when I and when I was in Japan, I got access to the actual like good pocket Wi-Fi websites because I was in Japan. So I got scammed from trying to order my pocket Wi-Fi from outside of Japan. And that happens a lot. Like if you buy things when you're not in Japan, you do pay more money for it, depending on what product it is. And then when you're in Japan, your internet's like, oh, okay, no way, you're in Japan. Let's get you the good deal. Especially if you can read Japanese. What's a piece of advice you give to someone who's coming to Japan as a tourist? If the fucking Google says to go there, don't go there. 
most people don't realize is that most restaurants in Japan on Google Maps are written in Japanese, not English. So if you look up the word yep. sushi on Google in English, it will show you the Japanese restaurants that have adapted their Google Maps to say the word sushi. Mm. But if you go yep. in Google Translate and write sushi translated to Japanese, then put that in your Google Maps, you will have a whole- He's right. Putting it in Japanese gives you way more options. However, if you do type in in English, you'll still find places that are good. There is a good chance that it might be more expensive though because they know like it's going to be in English and Taurus and Taurus have money so keep that in mind that's why it really pays to learn a little bit of Japanese before you go to Japan so that way you can go to the other restaurants and get a better deal it's just those will probably be geared more to foreigners which will probably mean maybe they could be more expensive or yep. more busier so if you want something that the locals are doing you're going to have to think like a local and type it in japanese this can probably also be said with the last video that we saw talking about like that hot pepper beauty app if you're going to a nail salon then type it in Google Maps in Japanese mm. rather than going on a website. Or if you're going to a nail salon, I'm pretty sure that you have Instagram. So go look up nail salon yeah. on Instagram. Yep. Do it in Japanese and do it in English. Save it all into an album before you come to Japan and you know what locations are good. True. These are some unspoken rules True. you should know before visiting Japan. In Japan, wearing too much cologne or perfume can be perceived as inconsiderate. Therefore, it is advisable mm. to wear subtle or no fragrance. You know what's interesting about that though? So I remember going into some restaurants where you could just smoke in the restaurant, like straight up. They had like these smoking sections and they weren't sectioned off very well. So you would still be sitting there, you know, eating your food and you could still smell the cigarettes. And God, I hated that. Especially when I've never heard of that. I don't think it's that serious of a rule. When honestly. eating at restaurants, you may even be refused service if your sense is too strong. While heavy I think you would be refused service if you smell bad. <laughs> I feel like that's yeah. more offensive, but no, I, I, I've I, never seen that in my life before. And I don't know. I feel like that's one of those rules that's that you shouldn't take that seriously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Some of these rules were important, but a lot of them is, are just things I really wouldn't stress out that much over if you're just visiting Japan for the first time. I mean, it's a learning progress. There's really nothing to it that you can't learn in like five minutes. And look, just don't. I mean, five minutes is kind of a stretch, but like, I, I get what she means by that. She brings up a lot of good points. Like, I I had a lot of fun in Japan. I think overall, my experience probably wasn't the most typical experience that most foreigners get to have because I did speak Japanese. I speak about N3 level, which is intermediate. Again, the only thing that held me back a lot of the times was just vocabulary and because like I didn't study enough vocabulary, but you don't need to know a lot of vocabulary to pass. You just need to know the grammar. So if your grammar is really good, then you can talk and conversate with people so much easier you might not know all of the words but you can understand like the context of like their sentence because you understand sentence structure and that can help you out way more and then you can kind of learn the vocabulary as you go and you can kind of like refer to things using more basic words to mean like more complex words and a lot of Japanese people will kind of understand what you're saying especially if you get really good with the punctuation and your inflection with how you talk in Japanese that is actually when I went to school in Japan because that's actually why I went to Japan was to finish my degree I went to a very intensive Japanese language school and um, we spent an entire month on just inflection which is why when I speak Japanese if you ever hear me speak it in like my live streams or like other like clips on this channel I sound very natural and I'm not sitting here trying to brag and stuff it's just the reason why I sound natural is because I was constantly practicing my inflection and it's stuff that we were graded on. It was literally like pass or fail for that kind of stuff. So if you sound natural in Japanese and you understand the grammar, you can get by pretty far and people will respect you and you'll get better deals because you can like kind of understand like what the heck is going on. Don't let any of these creators like scare you no. into coming here. Like, yes, there's a lot of rules, but again it's it's gonna be fine just learn a little bit of japanese come here don't be a dick and just have fun true that's all i gotta say bye no that's like so true if you, there's any unspoken rules that you have to kind of like do in japan it's just don't be a jerk don't be 
rude to people don't like get up in people's personal space um another thing is don't be loud and obnoxious when you're out in public places because that's kind of rude too when people like japan's very quiet even in tokyo japan is very quiet so that's something to consider if you're going there and with that i hope i could have helped you learn a couple of things to think about when you're going to japan hopefully you go visit there i really want to go there again too let's go to japan together someday and i'll see you on here again another day and remember everything reminds you of something bye